everybody. Today we're introducing you to some of the up-and-coming designers making their marks in the business today. Now, our next guest is on a mission which he calls the American Design Challenge. He's determined to bring back a design movement in America that dates back to the 1950s and the halcyon days of Ames and Airstream trailers. Joining us now, the founder of Totem. Please welcome David Sugar. How are you, David? Great. How are you doing? Now, David, you're, you're a, uh, in essence, a bit of a preservationist in certain respects, aren't you? Well, in a way, I think that American design is something that uh, we've kind of lost sight of, in a way, and there was a, a hey, period in the, in the 50s that was amazing, and now we're coming back into another period of design where American design is really taking hold. What do you attribute that to, the resurgence of, of American design? Well, I think it's been a, somewhat of a global thing, but I think that there's been a kind of a subliminal education process happening with film and everything mm -hmm. from uh, videos and... Uh, you go into a magazine store and you see a whole wall of shelter publications where uh, it was a few years ago there were You're absolutely them. right. So basically, as the media has expanded, giving us more information, exactly. we have proportionately expanded at the same time. Now, we were talking about, in your intro, about um, the 50s and some of the icons of that, uh, that period of time. Now, you're going to show us some furniture. In fact, we can just take a look at like, things like this sofa, maybe that lamp right, right there. Is, is this something that was from the 50s that you brought back, or is this something that, that actually is an antique from the 50s? No, this is actually a current design, actually uh, by a designer named Tom Dixon, who's uh, a British designer, quite popular. Um, definitely inspired by some of the Sputnik-type fixtures that yes, we saw absolutely. in the 50s, but an updated version that's now made out of plastic. It's roto-molded and using uh, updated technology to produce things also at a very reasonable cost, which I think is great. Yeah, that's terrific. Um, something like this sofa which I think is a great color. I love this sofa, by the way, against this, this, this background color. I think these two combinations really vibrate beautifully. This is actually a sofa, which is very comfortable, but it also makes it into a twin-size bed. It does. Uh, the back actually comes off. You take the tubes off, and it sits down like a puzzle piece and becomes a bed. Very easy, uh, great. great for the occasional guest, um, and functions very well. Actually, if you're having a party, you can sit about 10 people on this because you can sit on the back as yeah, well. Yeah, that's terrific. That's great. Now, these things here sort of surprised me. I almost went to drop one and I realized that it's actually squishy plastic. Or Is this plastic? Yes, it, it is. is. It's, it's vinyl. It's, it's actually vinyl. Yes, vinyl. There we go. So th these shapes, and, th and these are designed by a designer named Karen Machit, who's actually making his mark as an American designer right now uh, in a very big way. But these are uh, desktop objects or, you know, tabletop, things you can use as vessels. Mm -hmm. You can use them for pens, pencils, or you can put plants in them if you want. They're great looking. Now, what do we call these designs now? If, if some of this was inspired from the 50s, what do we call this now? <laughs> well, I think, I think we're starting to look to the future. In fact, mm -hmm. we have an exhibit at our gallery right now in Soho called Futurism, which is looking at designs, taking influences from the past, but looking towards the future as far as technology mm -hmm. and materials. And it's uh, very interesting. And the name of your company is Totem. What does that mean? Totem is an acronym for the objects that evoke meaning. And I think hmm. that, um, at least for me personally, the objects in our lives are something that should mean something to us. It should, it should evoke uh, an emotional feeling. Mm -hmm. um, people ask me what good design is, and it's very simple. Good design is good design. It's, it's something that you feel something about. And I think that we're coming into a period now of time when it's very exciting to express yourself in your environment. And mm -hmm. the objects that you surround yourself with and that you experience in your environment can do that. It's amazing, too, and as we, I think, have become more global, it's amazing how we're, we're freer to accept technology and influences from all around the world. Do you see that creeping in quite a bit? Definitely, now? definitely. Yeah. I mean, information is so accessible now that um, we know what's happening all over the world. The Internet's been a big influence. But I think it's, it's a great thing because now we know what other people are doing and we can make choices that we didn't have before. And you're talking about your gallery in Soho. Do you consider these objects gallery pieces or are these... Um, Function first, gallery second. Well, how do you position these? We, how would a designer or the consumer position these objects? Well, basically, the way we approach it is that from an educational standpoint. So uh -huh. we do exhibitions with designers to kind of show um, not only just the objects, but what's behind the design, the designer themselves, what their influences are. And I think that that education process is very important. And people can see a whole body of work by somebody that mm -hmm. they, you know, where, whereas they would only see bits and pieces before. So this way they can learn about what's happening mm -hmm. with design today. And it's, and it's objects that, you know, range from, you know, a few dollars to mm -hmm. maybe ten dollars or $20,000 for a one-of-a-kind piece, but it shows a real cross-section uh, in the market. I think it's, it's uh, yeah. 
That's terrific. You know, I think one of the things we, when we, we take a look at some of these kinds of objects, which definitely to me have a very art gallery sort of feel to them, but people who don't want to totally have an entire environment full of them, um, how do they integrate? Just maybe one or two of these pieces? Sure. And we don't uh, recommend to people that they have their whole home looking like totem products because yeah. it's, it, it, again, it's very personal. And I think I tell people if, if you like one thing, you, mm -hmm. it'll probably work with something else that you like. And I think that that's very important that there's a personal experience that happens when, when people are choosing furniture. And, and they can mix and match as much as they want. And I, I don't think we need to keep up with the Joneses anymore. Everything has to be the same. Yeah, I'm so glad to hear you say that. People say, what, people are always asking me what the new design trends are. And I think the new design trends are being yourself. Exactly. It's expressing <laughs> you know yourself. I mean? It's expressing it's yourself. Live the way you want to live, not the way you, you, you thought you were supposed to live. Let's go over here really quickly and take a look at some other stuff. I love this. This is like a big jack. Huh? This is a big jack. It's called the jack light. You can actually put a glass top on it, become ah. a table. You can even sit on it. Very cool. Uh, what is this? This is the blob bench, and it is a bench. You can sit on it. It is a bench? It is a bench, huh. uh, or it can be a piece of sculpture, either one. But I think that it shows some, you know, the way that furniture and function and art are blurring right now, and that's interesting. You know where we're kind of seeing things going. It almost looks like it's growing up from this great carpet here. Very nice. These are really cool. These are bar stools, aren't these they? These are bar stools. Oh, they're great. And these are designed by a designer uh, based in Singapore, actually. Mm -hmm. They're fiberglass. Uh, the nice thing about them is that you can, they actually have a couple of uses, and in fact, uh, we had set one up mm -hmm. before, but you can take the top off and use it as a wine cooler or champagne cooler. Oh, how great. Very nice. And I'm assuming you could probably put fabric on these if you wanted sure. to. This, this, this one's a vinyl. Yeah. That's very cool. And then again, you know, we're, we're also, there is a, a trend that I'm seeing coming back in fabric, and that is the return of these big, bold, graphic geometric Correct. stack where I'm working on a whole um, linen line right now that has big polka dots and things like that. So we see that influence here, but we also see it back here. Yes. This is right on this wall, too. Yeah. This is by a young uh, British designer named Michael Sado, mm -hmm. and uh, it's 100% wool. It's a beautiful carpet, but it's also a way to express yourself. It's, uh, you know, there's no reason why you can't hang a carpet on the wall and no, it's great. look at it as a painting as opposed to, you know, a, a, a typical kind of artwork. Well, that's great. Well, David, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're making the new that's antiques for another thousand years from now. Thanks very much. Okay, coming up next, we're going to meet a designer who will show us how to create furniture with a great woven veneer pattern. But first, we're meeting a designer with a solid, honest philosophy. You're going to like this guy. Hurry right back.